Greetings again, and here comes segment two for Unit 7 on cash flow budgeting. Let's jump right into and talk about really what is the structure of a cash flow budget. How do we put this thing together? Uh, first, we need to de develop a whole farm plan. We've got to know exactly what we're going to do and how. Uh, what are we raising? How are we going to do it? Uh, second, take inventory. All of your crops and livestock, everything that could be available for sale during the time period that we're starting to budget for. Again, whether it's a quarter uh, or a year. Uh, estimate crop production and livestock feed requirements. If you're a, a blended operation that has both uh, livestock and crop enterprises and you have a need for uh, the crops that you grow for feed needs, uh, those are obviously going to be items that aren't going to be available for sale or commodities that aren't going to fully be available for sale. You need to budget uh, for that as well because that's that's all stuff that either you don't have to buy uh, or won't be available for you to load on truck and take the town to the elevator and generate cash for. Um, if you have livestock, estimate those cash receipts. Estimate cash crop sales uh, for the period that you're budgeting for and estimate anything other that may come in as a result with cash, uh, whether it's custom work revenue, uh, you can plan for government payments occasionally, any rent that may be coming to you, interest, um, you know, basically anything else that may generate cash in that accounting period. You know, what, what is that going to look like if you can plan on it successfully? Next, estimate operating expenses, whether that's taxes, insurance, repair costs, uh, all of those other things, you need to estimate where that, what cash needs those are and where it's going to go and when. And then eighth, any personal and non-farm cash expenses. You know, how much is it going to, are you going to have to withdraw from the operation in order, in order to buy groceries and pay utilities um, and things of that nature on a regular basis? Social security and income tax, uh, just simple cash withdrawal if you need to go, you know, plan, plan for your monthly food budget. Um, if you're going to do a 401k or retirement contribution, uh, plan for those types of things that are personal non-farm non cash expenses. Ninth, estimate purchases and sales of capital assets, whether you're going to, you know, buy some new li buy livestock for the operation, you know, sell a piece of machinery that you no longer use so much, things of that nature. Uh, what impact is that going to have on your cash flow? Do you have a cash need or is cash going to be coming in or both? Uh, and then all scheduled principal and interest payments on existing debt. You need to plan for those types of things, whether it's just a simple vehicle loan, um, an operating note, or a, a large mortgage payment. So let's look at an example form. And uh, we've, talk, we've talked and looked at chart of accounts a number of different times. Here's something very similar. This one's op uh, actually quite detailed. It's a three-month uh, projection here. And this slide and the next slide actually goes through quite a number of line items in which you maybe need to plan for cash being available, whether it's something, if I go down and pick out the uh, uh, repairs for machinery costs, you could put a monthly um, cash flow need there. Property taxes, those aren't generally due every every month, but there might they might be due, let's say, in March. And so you have a, a number pop in there. We'll show you one that's filled out here in a little bit. Slide two shows you a number of other different things, you know, scheduled debt payments, um, non new uh, current borrowing needs, things of that nature. So again, this would be a quarter, first quarter and with a total column and how much cash might be available and needed for those types of uh, line item needs. I mentioned here's one that's that's completed. So this is an annual cash flow budget. Notice we have the beginning cash balance uh, for total and the entire uh, each month of the year, how much we expect to have in the bank. And then, you know, when cash may be generated and when cash is going to be going out. Notice we have a projected $20,000 of grain sales each of January and February, and then $60,000 of grain sales each October and November. Um, and a $88,000 uh, sale of livestock, you know, some feeders that we sell off in August. So you can kind of start to project how much cash may come in. Moving down the spreadsheet, then you see now where's all that cash going to go? And you start to then assign 
your dollar is a job as they go down through here. And you'll notice as we get to the next slide, um, everything, just about every line has something filled in somewhere along the line. So that allows you to project, again, when cash is coming in, when it's going out, and when there's going to be a shortage that you need to potentially work with a worth work with your your uh, loan advisor and be able to meet that cash shortage need it's always in, important to understand how to calculate interest on payments um, this one goes through kind of a, a, a good little example on a on a short-term loan but i'll tell you there's all kinds of uh, apps that you can download on your phone or um, loan interest payment calculators that you can download on the internet and we'll practice some of those things in class as well but it's important to know if you're going to uh, take out a loan how much interest are you going to pay and um, how much is that going to cost your operation and then how does it work on the payback schedule so when we use cash uh, uses for cash in a cash flow budget number one where, so where's it going uh, of course, borrowing and debt payment, those kinds of things need to take priority. You have to meet your obligations. And certainly you need to know how to prevent excess borrowing. You don't want to borrow more money than you need, uh, especially when it comes to an operating note. You don't want to have money sitting there that you're not using that you're also paying interest on. And you can also show yourself if you repay a loan quicker than prescribed how much money it would save you. Occasionally, a cash flow budget, budget also suggests ways that you could rearrange purchases and schedule debt payments to minimize that borrowing. How could you maybe buy things in a little bit different manner uh, in order to minimize your interest requirement? Maybe uh, you'll combine business and personal financials into one plan, maybe simplifies it a little bit, or maybe you need to break those out uh, so that you can tell personal to business from uh, agricultural business. Fourth, your lender can really help you more effectively whenever they understand uh, where your cash flow needs are, in addition to with your enterprise budget, your depreciation schedule, your income statement, your balance sheet. Uh, they can help you and advise you on establishing a realistic line of credit uh, as needed. Occasionally, you can find when you can capture discounts on product because you purchase it ahead of time or, or be able to pay in a certain schedule in order to uh, in order to capture a discount. If you can identify those in the cash flow budget that you'll have cash available to do that, it's a great advantage for your operation. Next, you can then plan with, uh, for taxation and capital expenditures. And primarily, of course, we're talking about getting to the end of the year here. And again, remember the goal is to not pay any income tax. Um, paying income tax means you made money. That's kind of the point of all business is to make money, but don't pay any more than you need. And so can you go out and make a um, cash purchase towards the end of the year in order to you know, help your operation along from a infrastructure standpoint? The one thing to guard against, though, is don't go out and buy something and borrow money for it just to avoid the tax ban, because occasionally you pay more in interest than you would have paying taxes. And that doesn't sound like a good business decision to me. Um, but you have to really pencil that out. So that cash flow budget might help you with that. Seventh, you can analyze potential problems with current and non-current debt. If you project a potential cash flow emergency coming and you can sit and work with your loan officer uh, to help you work through that challenging time. Those occasionally happen in agriculture as we deal with low crop prices and uh, extended times of low crop prices, or maybe we have an emergency on the farm. Um, the earlier that you can sit down and make your loan officer aware, the better job that they can do working with you and advising you on how to uh, gently navigate through those tough times. Again, here's another example, chart of accounts. And now we've shrunk it down to, we've, take, we've taken our budget year and we have our total and we're doing a year to date or budget to date amount in this middle column, and then in the right column, an actual to date. So now we're tracking very carefully expenditures that we are have accumulated and how close that we are to our budget line. That may help you because as you see um, line items reaching their budget point, then you can start to examine, could we push off further purchases to 
a subsequent month or year? Um, you know, what is that going to do to the total farm budget? So there's a number of different things you can start tracking now once you have a cash flow budget in place. We can also do some investment analysis with a cash flow budget. If you're thinking about building a new shop, a new shed, a new freestall barn, a new parlor, buying a new combine, renting new land, purchasing new land, you can start to identify those additional cash requirements because with additional infrastructure also comes more cash need because you'll have to repair it, you'll have to pay for it, uh, you'll have to buy inputs for it, whatever it might be, so that you can start to test if an investment is actually financially feasible and can you generate enough cash to meet those cash requirements. Here's an example that your textbook comes up with in terms of breaking down if irrigation uh, would be a reasonable investment. And so obviously in the first uh, couple years, it gives projected increases in crop income, additional crop expenses. Uh, notice the, the loan principal and interest is calculated in there and total cash outflows. So in this example, a adding an irrigation system loses money the first three years. But by year four, you start to begin to gain all that money back. So what's your return on investment? Uh, in adding, in this example, an irrigation system to your operation. That's how you go about making a good sound business decision. That wraps up this section on cash flow budgets and, and kind of concludes some of the budgeting. I think a whole farm budget now comes together very clearly with the enterprise budgets that we've talked about, as well as the partial budgeting and then the cash flow budget. And so all those things should kind of build and flow nicely into a good chart of accounts to do your home farm budget. We'll look forward to seeing you in class and doing some activities that reinforce this cash flow budget planning uh, in order to help make good sound business decisions in your agribusiness. Thanks for tuning in to this video.